Hi everyone, this is Dom from Tech Advisor, and I'm here with another new phone to unbox. This one is the Nubia Red Magic 3, the latest gaming phone from uh, the Chinese company Nubia. And yeah, let's get a look at it. It's pretty ridiculous from what I've seen online. I'm quite excited to see this thing in the flesh. So Nubia is a, you, you might sort of know the Red Magic uh, gaming phone line. I think we reviewed the Red Magic Mars not that long ago. Um, my colleague Lewis had a look at it. And uh, I also looked recently at the Nubia Alpha, which is the sort of flexible, like bendy smartwatch phone hybrid thing with a flexible screen, which is very cool. Uh, so a lot of their phones are, are kind of wild, uh, a little bit interesting. Uh, this is no exception, though it's kind of familiar if you know the Red Magic line already. So we've got our nice moody black and red uh, box, very gamer aesthetic, as you'd expect. And there we go, straight to it. Let's get it out. Oh. So here we have the Red Magic 3. Let's peel that off. Oh, if it wants to peel. Just give it a bit more fight than normal. There we go. Okay, here we have the Red Magic 3 in all of its absolutely ridiculous glory. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, in the black finish, as you can see. It's also available in red. Uh, sort of full red body, um, and I think there's like a sort of grey camo version, um, which is pretty nifty. We've also got, uh, I mean, it's, it's actually not as thick as I thought it was going to be. Uh, the phone's got a lot of oomph in it, and also a lot of cooling oomph in it, which I was worried was going to make it really substantial and really chunky. It's actually not. You can maybe see it just sort of like lifts up a bit here. There's this sort of angle. The, to the back, so that it's a bit, it is a bit thicker in the middle. But overall, it actually doesn't feel like a giant, giant phone. So yeah, we've got all these sort of gamery red detailing stuff on the back. Diamond-shaped fingerprint scanner, uh, which is, you know, a little bit different. Um, and that is the single rear camera. So obviously, they haven't gone sort of big set of camera lenses. The focus here is on gaming stuff rather than on uh, photos and camera. But still, that camera is a 48 megapixel sensor, so it should do fairly well, even on its own. And uh, they actually say it can shoot 8K video, which is pretty nuts. What else we got? Right, headphone jack, always nice, especially for a gaming phone. I think that's one area you, you really do need to have a headphone jack if you want to go gaming phone. Um, oh, yeah, we'll get to these. So power and volume, two extra buttons. I'll see if I can show them off in a bit. But these are designed for when you're actually gaming and you have, they are, they are basically, they're not actually buttons, they're sort of touch sensitive pads. So they can essentially act as shoulder buttons like you'd get on a gaming controller. Um, and then just getting down here, yeah, we've got a uh, USB-C port. You'll notice there's a speaker grill here on the bottom of the phone and one on the top. So it's actually dual front facing stereo speakers. Again, that's a big focus for gaming stuff. The expectation is if you're gaming on your phone, you might want really good sound being blasted at you if you're not wearing headphones. Also having them on the front helps because you're less likely to sort of block the speakers with your hand while you're holding it. If you hold it like that, most of the speaker is still gonna be uncovered. Uh, yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, and this is a sort of another hardware tool to like enter like the gaming mode of the phone basically. Um, and then this is for if you want to attach uh, controllers and stuff like that, I believe. It doesn't come with one. I know there are some gaming phones that sort of ship with uh, controllers and stuff in the box. This doesn't come with one, which is part of why they've sort of put these buttons on. But I, I think that's so that you have the option of attaching one if you would still want. Uh, we'll get into the rest of the box before I dive into the phone. So bright red charging cable, very OnePlus. Uh, that doesn't want to close up again, does it? No, I'm going to get rid of that. Power brick. Yep, uh, not a UK one, helpfully. Uh, but yet, yeah, that is our charging brick. It's got, uh, I want to say, 27 watt fast charging, which is pretty good. Uh, but actually, what's more interesting than the fast charging is actually the battery. Uh, another reason I thought this phone might be massive, it has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in it. Uh, which is massive. For a detective, 
most phones, most flagships come out in the sort of 3,000 something range. So 5,000 milliamp hours is a lot more. Uh, so battery life should be great, but it's got a lot of power as well. Uh, and that's just, yeah, SIM key and instruction-y stuff. So let's get all that out of the way and get onto the phone. Right, this should hopefully have some charge in it and we can get going. There we are, okay. So looking at the front of the device, we've got our selfie camera up here, just a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. Uh, again, you know, it, it's a single lens. Cameras are not the focus of this phone. It's top spec everywhere except the cameras. The cameras aren't low spec, but they're just not that kind of, you know, super, super, super high end. They're not gonna be best in class. Let's get through setup. top. Okay. Ooh, oh my God, <laughs> that was unexpected. Okay, here we are. We are in the phone with a nice, moody, sort of uh, Mass Effect-esque uh, spaceman in the background. Love it. Um, okay, one thing we'll notice is this is a bit dim. Let's see if this makes it a bit clearer. Yeah, there we go. So we can see um, it is quite bezel-y. So you may not like that. Uh, it does still feel a little bit old-fashioned, maybe, depending on your taste. Um, Obviously, if you're just really not a fan of notches or, or like pinhole cameras, you may prefer it. We, we often hear from people in the comments who say they actually like it when a phone has bezels because they, they still don't like a camera that interrupts the screen. So this is very much that. It's not really massive bezels. You can see there's just a little bit there at the bottom below the controls there and a little bit that's sort of half a centimeter or so at the top. Not massive bezels. Yeah, I mean, it's still like less than an iPhone 8 or, or even like a Pixel 3 or something like that. Uh, but it is bezeled. It's not a full screen display by any measure. Still, it is a nice display. As you can see, it's uh, pretty enormous. Uh, it's 6.6 .6 inches, something around there. I can't remember exactly. Uh, it's also uh, 90 Hertz. So as we've seen with most gaming phones, that sort of high refresh rate is becoming more and more the standard in a gaming phone as people look for that responsiveness when they're uh, watching content and playing games. So this should deliver on that front. The rest of the specs are also pretty top end. Snapdragon 855, like you'd expect. It goes up to 12 gig of RAM, 256 gig of storage. So again, this is like as good as you're gonna get in any phone, basically. Though there are some lower spec tiers as well. And like I said, massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty nuts. Okay, so one of the other things that you get on this phone is an RGB LED strip, which I'm pretty sure is this bit on the back. Uh, what we've hopefully cut out of this video is a montage of me struggling and failing to turn it on. Uh, I think this is pre-release software, which is probably why it's not working. I've found the app that runs it, uh, which I can show you, but unless I'm just being a massive idiot, I cannot make this thing light up right now. I'm sure it does work. I'm sure it will just be that this is an early model of the phone, but basically what it is is that uh, I think it's this bit uh, can light up, uh, you get sort of different color effects, flicker, flow, flash, collider, and beacon. Uh, you get to customize brightness, color, some of these you can see there's choices of like the upper half being one thing, the lower half being another. Um, you can sort of have it change between colors, all that kind of stuff you'd expect from a gaming phone or laptop with RGB stuff. It's just currently not working for me. The other big sort of a gaming feature that you get is like I was saying, this toggle, which puts you in game mode. So if I flip that, we now go, I think you can turn that sound off if you don't want that sound. Uh, but we now, it sort of takes us into the, the dedicated gaming space of the phone. Uh, I obviously haven't just taken the phone out of the box, no games on it yet, but so you can add specific games, you can control what notifications you get, block calls, that sort of thing. Um, that will let you turn on or off the RGB lighting, you know, when it wants to work. Uh, and the other thing that we'll note here is cooling fan. So this phone has a fan in it. It also has liquid cooling. Uh, Nubia says it's the first phone to have active cooling. It says it has up to 500% better heat transfer, which, um, you know, sounds good. I don't really know how to measure that. But yeah, basically, combined with all these specs, that's the reason it's bulks out a little bit at the back is there is a fan inside here. I think that's the fan vent probably. 
uh, and uh, and liquid cooling. So this thing should stay cool even if you want to play sort of five hours straight of Fortnite. And with the 5,000 milliamp hour battery, you can probably get away with five hours straight of Fortnite. Um, but yeah, the, it, it's just that kind of continued focus. Here we go. Fan adjustments. Uh, oh, you can actually hear it. I don't know if you can hear that coming through the mic, but yeah, there's sort of, you can hear the whirring of the fan coming out of there as I sort of uh, turn it up. Uh, and yeah, more LED effects that refuse to work for me right now, which is great. And there we go, the screen refresh rate as well. Uh, okay, a little bit of Chinese on the software. Yep, like I said, pre-release phone. Uh, but yeah, the choice between, I think that, that, that one is, is auto. So again, it will pick depending on the app you're in. Uh, or you can lock it at 60 or 90. And then if we toggle that back, we are back in the regular phone. So yeah, this is the Nubia Red Magic 3. Uh, I'm actually a fan. I went into this a little bit skeptical. It's not my kind of design aesthetic, but like I said, it's a lot slimmer than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, the RGB lighting is fun if you can make it work, which I apparently can't. Um, but it's like, I mean, the, the specs are nuts on this thing. If you just want a phone that's gonna be like top end flagship specs, great for gaming, the fact that you've got these extra shoulder buttons up here, this dedicated sort of gaming toggle, the cooling, I mean, it's OTT, don't get me wrong. You know, this is the equivalent of buying like a top spec Alienware gaming laptop or something. But I kind of love it for that. I'm glad that this gaming phone market space is really opening up a lot more. And this looks like it's gonna be a real competitor in that space because it doesn't require you to have an extra fan attachment or an extra controller attachment. You can do a lot more through just the phone itself than you can with some of the competitors. Uh, I don't know pricing right now. Uh, it's out in China, so there's Chinese pricing not UK or US pricing, though it is coming to the West. Uh, the pricing works out to kind of like the base model starting around 400 and 450 pounds slash dollars. Probably the actual Western pricing will be a bit higher than that. So I'd probably think it'll start around 500 and go up as the specs go up, going up to sort of seven, 800. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the low end, actually that pricing seems fairly competitive if that is what it ends up as. And yeah, I like it. It's probably not the phone I would buy myself, but if you're looking for a really top spec gaming phone, it's probably hard to beat. And yeah, remember to like and subscribe if you want more from Tech Advisor. We have some other gaming phone videos as well. And I think hopefully we're gonna pit this against some of the other ones that we have in at the moment to see which comes out on top. Thanks very much.